I'm so excited to be sharing with you tonight. Throughout all of lockdown, I've been stewing on the thought of growth. How do we grow spiritually, mentally, physically? And why does growth always seem to come with an uncomfortable stretch? Why is it before something flourishes, it feels like it needs to withstand every season? Okay, I might sound like a bit of a nature geek, but maybe I am. Did you know that in autumn, leaves from trees fall because they have no use for them anymore? These trees would not be able to survive the winter if they didn't let go of the old to allow in the new. Did you know that in winter, what happened in autumn actually helps the tree to survive the cold months? There are no leaves on the tree requiring water, so it retains the water in its wood, protecting it from the freezing winter and as it patiently waits for spring. In spring, we see the trees begin to show signs of new birth. There is hope. And in summer, the fruit of all seasons can be seen and are enjoyed. What if we saw our spiritual life like this? What if we accepted with no rain, there is no fruit? In John 15, it says, I am the real vine and my father is the farmer. He cuts off every branch of me that doesn't bear grapes and every branch that is grape bearing, he prunes back so it will bear even more. You are already pruned back by the message I have spoken. Live in me. Make your home in me, just as I do in you. In the same way that a branch can't bear grapes by itself, but only by being joined to the vine, you can't bear fruit unless you are joined with me. I'm the vine and you are the branches. When you're joined with me and I with you, the relation intimate and organic, the harvest is sure to be abundant. Separated, you can't produce a thing. Anyone who separates from me is like dead wood, gathered up and thrown onto the bonfire. But if you make yourselves at home with me and my words are at home with you, you can be sure that whatever you will ask will be listened to and acted upon. This is how my Father shows who he is. When you produce grapes, when you mature as my disciples. A vine is a plant that grows up, especially one which produces grapes. Each natural season's characteristics can also be seen in our day-to-day -day spiritual lives. Some we prefer more than others. I'm a July baby and I love summer, but some other seasons are harder to endure. Autumn can be seen as a time of loss. Winter, a time of waiting. Spring, a time of hope. And summer, a time of fruitfulness. Now I know we're sick of hearing about it, but for a lot of us, it can seem like the time of COVID has been filled with loss with darkness, the unpredictable, the waiting. We've all had our stories of how this has played out in our lives. For my family, illness and work has been two things that we've had to face in this time. What have you had to face? What have you had to overcome? It almost feels like as a nation, we are finally stepping into a time of spring, a time of hope and seeing the fruit of our quarantine labor. We have less restrictions and even being able to leave the country, unless you plan to go to Spain in which case you're staying at home. Naturally and spiritually, transitioning through loss, waiting, hope and fruitfulness is hard. But why is it so fundamental to a life as a Christian? I wanted to take time to explore this, but before I do, let's pray. Jesus, I pray that you would speak to us in this time. I pray that you'd speak through me. If people are watching and they're going through a time of loss, a time of waiting, a time of hope, a time of fruitfulness, Jesus, I pray that this message would speak to them, Lord. I pray, Lord, that we'd be able to engage in your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. The first season we're gonna look at is autumn, a time of loss. Loss is very relevant in our Christian faith. When we decide to follow Jesus, we lose our old ways and start living like God and His ways. We believe that Jesus died and rose again to bring us new life. As believers, we choose to get baptised in water, as it says in Romans 6, 4, we were buried therefore with him by baptism into death, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we might too walk in the newness of life. Loss is a fundamental part of our beliefs. John 15, two to three says, he cuts off every branch of me that doesn't bear grapes and every branch that is grape bearing, he prunes. Outwardly, pruning and taking away actually look very similar and can be mistaken for each other. But pruning is defined as to trim by cutting away dead or overgrown branches or stems, especially to encourage growth. 
Are there things in your life that God is pruning and you feel like He's taking it away? A job, a friendship, an opportunity? Hindsight is a beautiful thing. When you look back and finally see the why, you will thank God for some things that He's taken away. I know I do. Sometimes I think we actually need to thank God for the naive prayers we prayed that He did not answer. Jesus always has a plan for us when we are feeling worthless, when we're feeling useless. We might outwardly look like there's absolutely no fruit, but inwardly, God is doing a great work in us. The Bible is full of promises of harvest if we do not give up. But waiting can be so disheartening. In Galatians 6, 9, it says, and let us not grow weary in doing good, for in due time, in due season, we will reap if we do not give up. It says in the New Living Translation, at the right time, we will reap a harvest of blessing if we do not give up. Winter, the wait, can bring out the worst in us. My mom always says to me, delay is not denial. And I'm learning more and more that our time zone isn't always the same as God's time zone. Are you about ready to give up? Are you considering giving up on your faith, on your dreams, on your marriage, on your life? The important part of waiting is waiting with God, remaining in Him. And if you're struggling with waiting, my really good friend Maureen, she did an amazing message on waiting and it'll be on our YouTube channel if you wanna check that out. Verse four of John 15 says, live in me, make your home in me just as I do in you. In the same way that a branch can't bear grapes by itself, but only by being joined to the vine, you can't bear fruit unless you are joined with me. Waiting is an action word. It's proactive. Psalm 23 says, though I may walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. What valley are you walking through? Who are you walking with? In the darkest valleys, where do your eyes tend to look? Are you looking down, discouraged? Are you even closing your eyes, afraid to look forward? Are you looking side to side to see who you're doing it with and competing with others? This time has taught me to look ahead with no fear, but also to look up to God, to wait with God. There's been so many opportunities to turn away from God or hide away for things that feel uncomfortable. But in this time, I've learned that looking away only leads to more fear and a downward spiral. It's a choice to look heavenward. It's a choice to wait with the Lord. Loss and waiting can turn us away from God or it can be an opportunity to put our hope and firm foundation in Him if we hold on to spring, a time of hope. Hebrews 6.19 says, this hope is a strong and trustworthy anchor for our souls. He is the anchor for our souls in the rain, in the storms, in the winter, in the loss. This song we're about to sing was written by some of the team and the chorus has moved me to tears almost every single time I hear it. It says, take it all from me. I want to be close to you. What a challenging thing to proclaim. Take it all from me. I want to be close to you. I find that every time I sing it, my flesh wants to fight it, but my soul knows I need to sing it. God is kind. He never takes away anything for the sake of it. He's our father and as a father always protects their children, he's always protecting us, taking away, pruning. What if we didn't fear things being taken away? What if we were willing to be pruned? Let's take a moment to reflect on the words of this song. I would even encourage you to sing it in your heart or out loud, but really mean it. Take it all from me. I want to be close to you. What could God do if we truly accepted Him to be the true vine? Here I am at your feet. I see the scars that cover me. I struggle through the darkness. Lord, I surrender And here I come On bended knees I give my life An offering And everything I have Lord, I surrender
When I think of the story of Abraham in the book of Genesis in the Bible, both him and his wife Sarah knew what it meant to wait. They waited and waited and waited for a seed to produce harvest. They prayed for a child. The years kept going by and by and they got very old, like 100 old. It seemed impossible. It was almost as if it was never going to happen, but then came a miracle baby. They named him Isaac, which means he will laugh, reflecting on the disbelief they had when God said they would have a child at old age. Isaac was a testimony. But the story doesn't end there. After Abraham delighted in his son, God turned his testimony into a test and asked Abraham to sacrifice the one thing he wanted so badly. Sacrifice his son Isaac. Abraham did what was bold and courageous and I can almost imagine him singing the words of that song whilst he walks up the mountain. Take it all from me. Take it all from me. I want to be close to you. But God kept to his promise and he gave Abraham a lamb to sacrifice in the place of Isaac. Abraham and Sarah encountered the weight, but then received the fruit. God is ready to give us the fruit we desire, but we must not make idols of it. We've explored the autumn loss, the winter wait, the hope that comes in spring, and we finish with a summer of fruitfulness. The harvest that comes from living a wholeheartedly surrendered life to God is endless. It is an abundant life. Yes, it has its dark days, but ultimately it sharpens us. It builds resilience. It fosters endurance. It bears fruit. When we say fruit, we can often think of the material things, but that's not what John 15 is referring to. It says, you didn't choose me. Remember, I chose you and put you in the world to bear fruit. Fruit that won't spoil. As fruit bearers, whatever you ask in the Father in relation to me, he gives you. But remember the root command, love one another. 
Fruit bearers are full of love. They're full of joy. They're full of peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control, as it says in Hebrews 5. The fruit of the Spirit is priceless. Abiding in God produces this fruit in the autumn loss, in the winter weight, in the spring hope, and the summer of fruitfulness. Tonight you might say, Fadila, I want what you're speaking of. I want this fruit. I want to live a hopeful, joy-filled life. Regardless of if you are a Christian or not, this is a choice. Every single day we have to make that choice. Remaining in God is a daily decision. John 16 says, I have told you all of this so that you may have peace in me. Here on earth, you will have many trials and sorrows, but take heart because I have overcome the world. Are there things at the moment that you need to overcome? This is the time in our service where I give you an opportunity to make your peace with Jesus, to decide to follow Him. And I'm not saying that your troubles are gonna go away, but doing it with your heavenly Father gives your perspective and a hope. And God didn't design us to do it alone. He designed us to do it with Him and with others. I would encourage you to call a friend, be vulnerable, tell them what you are going through, tell them that you've decided to follow Jesus. Reach out to the person that invited you to watch this online service. Just like the story of Abraham that I told you about, God gave up a sacrifice in place for us. He gave Jesus who died and rose again so that we could live this fruitful life. If you're in a time of loss, of waiting, confusion, I promise you that this book, the Bible, can bring restoration and healing. I would love to pray for you. Lord, I pray for every single person, whether they know you or not, who are seeking to understand you more, to understand your ways more. Lord, I pray that you'd come into their lives, Jesus. Speak to them, Lord. Let them have a vision for their future, Lord, that you have a plan and a purpose, Lord, way greater than what they could ever ask, think or imagine. Lord, I thank you for the fruit you're harvesting in our lives. I thank you that you love us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.